Hello and welcome back to the Ospreys Irie podcast, the podcast who uh, is, is, is having a good time, I won't lie, <laughs> is riding on a bit of a wave of positivity. Um, we're back to a full three this week, um, so joined as always by, uh, he's no longer scum, he's no longer journalist scum, he's back from his placement, it's it's Justin, how are we yes? Well, I was here last week, so... Um... Maybe you were a journalist last week, so <laughs> I technically, technically still am. So, um, yeah, hello, I'm back, and we are joined by still probably the busiest man in rugby, uh, Robbie Owen. I mean, no, I think there's um, hey, that's Jim Hamilton, apparently. Um, make your own yeah. judgment on, on that. No, I've been getting a lot of um phone calls from lawyers since Monday night. Um, I'm not sure what that's all about. <laughs> Do I need context for this? Is this something I like... no. Well, so I look, I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I don't listen to the rap every week, but I chose to listen this week. And what should I hear? But what Mr. James Reese, apparently, passing off my name to lawyer. This is okay. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Already. Oh yeah, absolutely. that's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. you framed me. Yeah, absolutely. You framed me for a crime. Look, all I'm saying, I'm about to have a baby and you have YouTube money. So if anyone's gonna win the legal battle, it's you. <laughs> Right. I mean, look, let's, um, no, you've got a flawless argument there. You've got a flawless logic. You've um, got I NordVPN. Not... I've not, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, I can tell you some stuff about NordVPN um, off air um, about that situation. Because, <laughs> oh, ooh, I got a hell of an email a few days ago. Um, but that's a whole other thing. Um, yeah, you may not see that sponsorship again very soon. Um <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh, right, okay, this is the note in which we, we intend to um, continue on. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Robbie's entering a legal battle on my behalf. Yeah, be like, that's the plan. Be like legally blonde, but like legally not yet, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are we, gents? Good, yeah. No, good, good. good. yeah. Good, yeah, I was down um, Bristol, Ashton Gate, for the uh, Women's Six Nations game at the weekend. So spent that afternoon with my phone off, um, got back and delightfully watched the game back. Um, I did have the brief spoiler of accidentally opening my emails when trying to get the train ticket up um, to show that, you know, get through the bloody ticket barrier. And um, seeing I had an email from the Ospreys, that said Ospreys saw, so I assumed they won. But, you know, having not read the second part of the email, I didn't know for certain. The Wait, rest did of you not think it could have been sore as in we had like seven injuries? <laughs> with an A though. Sore with an A. Yeah, and they, like, had the they used on. to. We're going to get on to the um, good player this week being the Ospreys in sort of 2006, six seven. Back in that era, they used to use bird puns an awful lot, the Ospreys. Yeah. It was always Ospreys swoop to sign Irish winger Tommy Bow or Ospreys pecking at a dead carcass of you know, some other regional player they've signed or Ospreys lay a bunch of eggs in the ground and yeah. um, run off. And you know what? I'm glad they're going back to that. with it, it, It's sword. really, with the merger talks and like the closing down of Welsh rugby, they have not used the word endangered once. Mm. And I'm like, if you're going to tell us we're shutting down, at least call us endangered. <laughs> We're returning to Scotland, though. That's the yeah, e- that's the good thing. Ealing are, Ealing are actually poachers, big game <laughs> hunters. <laughs> have you ever this had that have... thing where you're like in a in a museum or somewhere where you see birds and you see like a, I had it in a, a museum in Canada where I saw like a taxidermized osprey and I felt like really emotional, like it was my bird. Look, that weirdly, I saw that article on Wales Online, not the rugby version, that said mm. an osprey has come back to Wales, and I was like, "Hang on a minute, an osprey in an Irie? I was like, "Can I see a bird? <laughs> Is this possible?" Uh, yes. Then, how was your weekend? Um, good. I uh, managed to watch some rugby match Saturday afternoon, which I'm sure we'll, we'll jump into. It was good fun, and yeah. um, yeah, I had a bit of a bit of a quiet weekend, and then. Uh, yeah, did Ponty play this weekend? Yeah, they did, and they lost by two points, which affected... Oh, yes, they did. They lost to Charlie Tipkin, the greatest player yeah, in the world. Ended their playoff hopes. Um, oh, man. 
And so that's a bit of a kick in the teeth for them with the, the trip to North Wales as their final game of the season. So um, that that yeah, be a messy one. That was a bit of a bit of a. You break. don't you don't have to go to RGC though, do you? Well, no, the options there, but um, but yeah, uh, do I want to take a three hour drive up there? Uh, I don't <laughs> well, you can see the millions wanting to play rugby though. That's well, what I, I keep getting told. I, is I, that I could the millions want to play? You know, the attendance of Pontypridd against RGC would be vastly interesting because. Social media says something to me that it would be a well attended match, but who knows? Yeah. It's affinity <laughs> versus untapped masses. Yeah. Affinity versus pissed up Liverpool fans. <laughs> <laughs> and James King. James <laughs> King. Who else is from North Wales? Um, um, Nell Metcalf. Nell Metcalf, yeah. Um, uh, George North, George the most North, obvious yeah. of them, the the easiest He's North Walian to name from a pure efficiency standpoint. Yeah, um, he won't be playing though. No. Um, Ollie Cracknell, is he North Wales? I thought he was yeah. Leeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he played a bit for RGC, I think. Ah, oh, did he? Yeah. I, was, I know he's born in Leeds. I I, I know that. Rob um, McCusker, Grog. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Rob McCusker. The McBride. Uh, Yes, the McBride. That's a good one. Billy McBride, good player. Mm. Don Doncaster legend. Yeah. Look, I any man, it. any man who you know gives ball to Guido Volpi is a man after my own heart. There was a part on Friday night. Was, so I basically spent the whole weekend watching rugby. Right, but Bex mm. has been ill. I'm, I'm at my in-laws now, um, but Bex has been ill, so I sort of stayed down south for the weekend, and uh, we don't play. On Easter weekend uh, in in England, so I had no game. So I basically had a great weekend of watching rugby. So the the the, um, the Friday game was Dragons v Zebra. Aguido wasn't initially in the squad, so I was fuming. It's the fact that come on, we have we have a former Osprey here um, who who had all these hype articles written around him saying, "Oh, the the management really like it. There's something about this kid." Um, and he only played like seven games. Uh, and then he came on and I just shouted at the top of my voice and my windows were open. They just said, Guido! <laughs> uh, and I thought, oh, this is a bit sad. Uh, but yeah, I had a great time watching rugby. As you can see, by my, if, for those watching on YouTube, you can see my Zoom name. Um, I always like to, to mm. do a funny little Zoom name. Um, so this week I've chosen to uh, pay tribute to uh, the team that are building something special. Uh, in, in, in the in the league, so yeah, I had a great great time watching rugby, and then obviously watched it's losing bones point RFC for people actually yeah. listening. To, uh, listening I, no, to I was podcast. gonna, I was gonna, I'm trying to drive yeah. engagement. To You're YouTube. trying to drive. Sorry, yeah, he wants the YouTube so a, as well. Look, <laughs> yeah. There's we? no future in it. Mate. As soon as there's we no get a thousand subscribers, it. I can get paid. All right, <laughs> the, <laughs> the algorithm oh. will tear you down, and yeah, then NordVPN will pull out a sponsorship. Um, it will just keep happening. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So good, good weekend of rugby. Let's go into news desk. Uh, a bit of news since we were last on. Uh, let's, let's go chronologically. First off, Ethan Lewis signed a new deal at the Ospreys. Um, <clears throat> the man they call Custard Slice has signed on after impressing the management. Um, this thoughts? Is, yeah. I mean, good player, really solid replacement. Um, the good thing that surprised me, the timing. Yeah, great squad player. Um, the way he stepped up during the international window, fantastic. Uh, the thing that really surprised me about this is the timing of it, because I would have thought with the uh, signing video they put out, they would have held it back until sort of Oscar season, maybe sent you know it out in one of the autumn festivals, kind of maybe Telluride or Toronto, um, or maybe can at the start to kind of build hype towards you know a later run in those, and then you know put it out to the general public in maybe December or January so you can build some kind of Oscar campaigning for Dan Edwards to be best supporting actor. Because um, I think, you know, it's a, a superb video and some of, the, you know, look, if it doesn't work out as a fly half, then Dan Edwards has a has a career as a, an actor who asks people what they can have for lunch. A waiter. It's very like, it, it, his acting skills were just silky, is all I can say. Like, I though it's like the way he controls a game, to be honest. <laughs> it's just sort of like, can you time his award season to when World Player of the Year happens? <laughs> Get him a GQ run, 
like yes. Dupont style. Um, but instead of like GQ, it would have to be like the Welsh version, so it'd be like Sport in Wales. Yeah. Um, and he does a podcast with Gareth Anscombe and Karen went off uh, yeah. Cardiff Central. Everyone thinks that Andrew Garfield's going to win the Oscar. Everyone thinks it's lined up, it's sorted. And then last minute at the SAG Awards, he drops a goal to win it. That would be excellent. And I would love that so much. Yeah, so Ethan Lewis has resigned. Yeah, sorry. Um, for, yeah, no, I, I just really like him. I think he stepped up really well. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, and just having that, you know, bodies in the squad. He's the right age profile. What is he like? Got to be, how old is he? Um, five twenty six, something like that. I he think. was in. He was in good player last week. I should say. I, I should know this. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, tw- he's thirty. He's thirty. Oh, really? He turned. He turned thirty last week. On the birthday, it was his birthday that he signed the contract. Yeah, his thirtieth birthday. He's got a younger face. <laughs> he's got a younger face. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. He's the right age profile for what you want from a squad player. Mm. So in that. When you look at his end of his career, he probably won't have like hundreds of hundreds of appearances. He'll have enough to have made a difference in the squad. Mm. Um, following on from that, in terms of contract news, announced just earlier on, thank God they did it well, like before we recorded. Mm. Um, something that we predicted is Jack Walsh was having a new deal. Uh, great mm. announcement video. Um, one of the better ones. I mean, nothing tops Harry Deves. Um, but this was an excellent one. I couldn't shake the feeling there's a missed opportunity here, right? Because I don't know if I've okay. ever seen the Robert De Niro film Midnight Run. I have which not. Is a great film, great film, Robert De Niro. Yeah, nineteen. If it's not on via play, I don't know. <laughs> but do you know what Robert De Niro's character is called in that film? Uh, Elvis Jack Hale. Walsh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He plays a character called Jack Walsh. And I watched that for the first time right after they signed Jack Walsh before he's played. And it was a bit like, whoa, is this what we're getting? We're getting like a maverick like detective played by Robert De Niro. I'd love that as an Australian utility back. He's been... I've made no bones about it. He's been one of my favourite signings from the beginning. Yeah. I think... And it's not unfair to say that he was very hot and cold his first season. Mm. You know, your first introduction to Welsh rugby is you have to play a Welsh derby and you nail a last minute kick <laughs> to draw. And then but then you do things like you miss touch. You know, you mm. have a very hot and cold goal kicking percentage. Things like that. So, you know, but the way he controls a game now and takes it to the line, he's just become a really, really smart rugby player. Yeah. And and you can probably tell that. He was really undervalued at Exeter. And I was looking through, there's a game in uh, in the Prem Cup where he scored like two tries and kicked a load of points. And I'm so trying mm. to hunt it down. But you can see it in the last couple of weeks, especially the way he takes the ball to the line at 15. And as a 10, he just, he's a joy to watch. Yes, then, how do you, how do you feel about Jack Walsh resigning? Yeah, it's a really good, you know, re-signing, first of all. Um, obviously in a bit more depth. Similarly to Ethan Lewis, you know, he provides depth a hooker, Walsh provides depth at ten and fifteen, and you know, that's good news all round. And yeah, I agree with you with, with Walsh, especially coming from fullback over the last few weeks. I don't know how he does it, but he can always like find the half gap and he always goes for it as well. And you just can't complain for that if you if you, if you want to ask someone to find Good rugby, just watch Jack Walsh because he tends to bring it in in some good amount at the moment. And um, yeah, at first I I thought the move to fullback wasn't going to work. Obviously, his first game of fullback saw that try, which um Cardiff scored at the Arms yeah, Park, bang, the horrible bounce away it? from him, which is just uh, not a very good start. But he's he's gelled in really nicely. I think this season he's probably been one of the the best performers, like maybe an unsung hero type role. Out of the uh, the Ospreys and and doing it in two different positions as well, which is uh, good to see. Hmm. I think he's maybe the most improved player of the last two years for the Ospreys. The way he's come on, yeah. he started as a good player, a great kind of attacking ten, mm. and he's become a great all round ten. And 
now a great all round fullback as well. And yeah, the way he's come on, he's one of those players where if all he gave us was the performance off the bench in um, against the Lions, at yeah, Park, I was just about to say that'd be this, enough. Yeah, that'll be enough, you know. Yeah. But there are plenty of others dropped in amongst. You know, really good against the Sharks earlier this season. Um, there's a few really great performances this year where he's really stepped up and he's just come on leaps and bounds and played, yeah, brilliantly and beautifully. And yeah, love watching him. Was a player I was slightly nervous was gonna lo- was gonna leave. Um, I did overhear him saying he was staying when I was in camp a few days ago or a <laughs> week. So that that eased my fears a little bit, but I still saw the notification come through. I still saw the announcement and was absolutely delighted. You know, because there's a little bit of you's like, maybe I misheard. Yeah. And, and he, he just like the, he goes through periods of like in that preseason game is his Cardiff. Do you remember you just kept bumping off people? And I'm like, why is Jack Wells turning like prime Julian Save all of a sudden? <laughs> but that, it's just the way he's able to break a line. I'm thinking Connock's first game of the season, to put Ruben through. The Lions, he makes a couple of half breaks. Um, Munster last week beats defenders. Like he, He's one of them ones who... I don't think he passes the eye test mm. as a player. Because you look at him, because he can just, he does do it all in terms of great kicking game, great range of passing, defensively quite sound, um, plays flat to the line, got a good turn of pace in him. I'm thinking Glasgow at home, um, mm. collects that kick, puts that lovely pass over the top. So yeah, I'm buzzing. I, I, I've made no bones about it. I'm a big Jack Ross fan. I know. Um, mm. Fan of the pod, Roger Uranka is as well. Um, as he messages me, Super Jackie Walsh every time. Um, every time he does something. So yeah, really happy with that. And let's move into the rumor, into the rumor mill. Uh, mm. So <laughs> uh, on Saturday, I believe it was Saturday. Um, Neil Fissler, in his weekly transfer column for Rugby Pass, uh, for World Rugby Owned Rugby Pass, um, put out uh, a thing saying that Ospreys have completed the signing of Phil Cockner Singer from Leicester from next season. Cockner Singer is 22, um, has played sporadically for the Tigers this season after joining from London Irish. He's obviously the younger brother of Joe Cockner Singer and the cousin of Laggy to Weimer. I mm. think I've said Laggy Toomer, right? Yeah, yeah. Red Roses. Um, big, powerful. He's played about 80% of his games at inside centre, 20 at uh, outside. What do we think of this if it is true? Go, uh, Robbie, you can go first. Oh, oh yes, then. Okay. Go, yes, then. No. You started. Yeah, please, Justin. Oh, go on. Then. All right, if we can mould him into an outside centre just to have a little bit of depth there, that'd be really nice. But obviously, if he can play mm. 12 and maybe play back up to uh, Kieran Williams, then that'll be also really nice. So if he can play both, then happy days. So, um, yeah, I, probably I don't know much about him because I probably don't watch the Premiership as much as maybe other people do. Uh, I watch... Too much URC and top fourteen for that for the uh, <laughs> app, um, but but yeah, he seems like an exciting player from what you read from Leicester supporters online, and you know you see certain clips of him and, and things like that. So yeah, you know any player that comes on board, you 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 tend to give him a little bit of time before assessing what you really think of him. So you know if it if it does if it does happen, of course it's uh, mm. it could be a very interesting move. Yeah. And becomes, I don't know if he's the first or he's one of the, no, there's a few, um, to complete what I'd call like the Robbie Owen double of playing for Nottingham and for the <laughs> Ospreys. Who um, are the others? A, um, I can't think off the top of my head now. I'm sure there are others. Um, you know, there's a few like uh, Josh Adams briefly played for Nottingham. Um, okay. There's a few of those players that like bounce around that went there on loan for a little bit. Um I, I will think on this and I will find out the answers. I'm sure there's another one. But yeah, he could be amongst the first on the list. Um, but yeah, so he has played 13. He played 13 a bit when he was at Nottingham. Um, I don't, you know, follow them religiously, but they 
play fairly close to my house. So, you know, I'm vaguely familiar, um, as I'm sure we all are things near our house. Um, but yeah, he gives us another option, I think fits the kind of Kieran Williams mold of a very powerful, great ball carrier with some pace. And is a very kind of rugby challenge signing, you know, where you kind of bring him in and he doesn't feel like he should fit, but he kind of fits the mold of the player we're going for, if not the profile of the kind of players we normally sign. And well, I'd be excited to see how he fits in. It's a Toby Booth thing. Yeah. Because we all know Toby Booth works with his brother. Mm. On two, uh, I'd imagine two separate occasions, being the yeah. Irish Academy and then at Bath. So you probably looked at the the rawness of him and when it, obviously they would have had extensive talks with Tigers around mm. obviously with Nicky and the vibe I'm getting from Tigers fans is that he isn't getting enough opportunities yeah because they've signed Solomon Ikata, um they've got Matt Scott there you know they've got centres hmm so the, the vibe is he's not getting enough opportunity. And he's only 22. Yeah, which surprised so, yeah, me. Know. I thought he'd been around quite a long time. Yeah, I thought he was about 24, 25. Mm. So, you know, he's only played uh, 11 matches this season for Tigers. Mm. And he's only started three of them. You know. <sighs> he's a it, player you can kind of mould, who has a lot of yes. raw attributes, who can be shaped into something potentially special. Yeah, I agree. No, it's exciting. He, it's yeah. an exciting and an actual I signing think, as well. Yeah, an actual human being. And, and the casuals will love it because they think they'll see the English Giants and Leicester Tigers. And, you know, it's Joe Cockner seeing his brother. We all know how exciting Joe is. And I think it has the potential. And Toby knowing the family as well as he does. And, you know, I just think if it comes off, it goes well. I think he could be. I think he's been assigned as a thirteen, personally, mm. with the option of playing twelve. Um, it would be interesting to see um, around what happens with thirteen as a jersey. I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, mm. But yeah, speaking of thirteen, um, we finally got confirmation on what's happening with the Vardy Boss shop. After I've had about six or seven uh, different conversations this week. So, Ivadi Boshoff is staying until the end of the season. It is confirmed. Contractually, he is not allowed to play for the Cheaters because he is signed on a loan deal until the end of the season with the Ospreys. Mm. He is not allowed to play for the Ospreys in the Challenge Cup as he is cup tied with um, Cheaters. And he is not playing the Cheetahs uh, game against Claremont. Of it. He is simply back in Bloemfontein to visit his wife. Which, quite frankly, he deserves. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Boshoff has been brilliant since coming in mm. and gives us the much needed depth in the centre because the only other centres we had out and out would have been Tom Florence. Mm. We would have had international test centre Luke Scully. Um, <laughs> and maybe Max Nagy. Hmm. So having Bosch off to go out to Cape Town and to wherever the other one is, Durban, no, not Durban, we've done, Durban, we've done Sharks. Yeah. Cape Town and uh, who's the other one? Storm isn't but... Pretoria. Uh, yeah, Pretoria. Yeah. The two worst ones, the ones at the heart. Yeah. Um, yeah, so having that, and then obviously to go to Dublin as well in the in the RDS. Mm. Um, yeah, what, what's your thoughts on Ivardi? One of you. I'll go first again. As, yeah, uh, please. With the uh, with the subtle hand notice. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> big fan, really big fan of Ivardi Boshoff, and um, yeah, you can kind of see as, as soon as he stepped in. For that Ulster game, you thought, you know, there's something about this player. And, mm. um, you know, I think in defence, he's been really good as well. And he's had, obviously, the odd glimpse with, with ball in hand. And, and yeah, you know, to, to see, you know, this partnership kind of work in a way. Obviously, we had news of Cam Jones, who could potentially be going down to South Africa to play for the Cheetahs, which is a, a brilliant learning curve for him. 
as especially mm-hmm. as a young prop forward. So um yeah, more Bosch off. Can't complain. Yeah. I thought he was absolutely fantastic at the weekend. Um mm. really, really sound positionally defensively and just running his lines and keeping everything running and ticking over. Um and allowed Owen Watkin, who has been on amazing form, to show a different side of himself, a side we kind of haven't seen for a long time, where he was He's perhaps 16, a bit more... Owen Watkin. Yeah. But that kind of slightly more like individually focused Owen Watkin after for a few, you know, months the rest of the season. He's been a very team first and he's done a wonderful job of knitting everything together. And he's been fantastic as a kind of ultimate team player and squad player. And Boshoff took some of that pressure off them and they felt like they kind of shared that responsibility. And it allowed Watkin to go for those big strips that he used to go for. And, you know, the one where he's then running down the wing afterwards gave me life. I was watching that at one in the morning, having just got back from Bristol whilst being ill and was suddenly felt like I could walk on water. It, it was one of the most <laughs> beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. And just, yeah, allowing the players around him to really, you know, make the most of themselves. And it's been absolutely fantastic. And yeah, reading that interview, clearly loves his wife, really misses his wife. And I will stand <laughs> a massive wife guy who's defensively solid for a team. Yeah, I think he's just... We saw the try he set up against Munster, yeah. the way he can hit the line. I think if you can do that consistently, the big test will be against Sale, is, yeah. is how do they contain... I don't like to say how do they contain Manu, because I don't think Manu is as destructive as he used to be. He, with he won't be available, but... Is he, is he injured? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, Bush up, yeah. yeah, sorry, but if we right, how how is he going to contain Jamie Osborne then in Leinster? <laughs> <laughs> when he sees Rob Russell, what is he going to do? They're um, going to bring back a prime Brian O'Driscoll, knowing our luck this season. Yeah, for his Any first thoughts? league game against not Munster ever. You just know that twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, the game out there is just going to be on repeat in the, in the gym all week. <laughs> And they're going to view it as a script that they need to learn. Yeah. And then when they don't see Josh Thomas, they're going to be so confused. Yeah, it's just the last 10 minutes they're just going to have on loop all week until <laughs> the Leinster players will be ready to break gym equipment just by watching <laughs> that final 10 minutes. The the the, the duplication pods of the, whatever seven they've got out this week will just have that implanted into their brain stem. That's it. Gym equipment is just one of the randomly generated Leicester players this week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, he's kept at a Blackrock College and has somehow got 25 <laughs> appearances already. No one's heard of him. No Leicester fans no. are aware that he's played 25 he's games already. He's got two already. Champions Cup medals. <laughs> <laughs> and an island cap. Yeah. Uh, um, and I was like, oh, it was against Fiji last autumn. And he's like, we didn't play Fiji last autumn. It was a World Cup. How did he yeah. get it? No, it was in the it was in the behind closed doors training match against Portugal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he was captain, and he got really yeah. good reviews from the coaches. Yeah. Um, oh god, that was one of our worst tangents. Murray Kinsella um, is the only player, only guy who knows <laughs> he exists. Yeah, Rory O'Connor has denied his existence multiple times. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so. Yeah, I'm just really happy that Vardy is going to um mm. is going to stick around. Um yeah. And then Andy Howell put out an article saying that we're moving to St. Helens. Um yeah. I'm gonna caveat this from the start. This has been strenuously denied by um Lance Bradley. Um I will put my two pence out. I've had multiple sources messaging me saying that St. Helens is the strongest option and they believe no, while no deal has been made that steps are being taken towards St. Helens being the completed um, completed uh, finalised product um, take everything you read with a grain of salt um, the plans mm-hmm. would see it was poorly worded by Andy Howell because it made it sound like it's just the same deal that we have at the at the Swansea.com stadium now, where we pay rent. Mm. We pay an extortionate amount of money. We're essentially on like a pay-by-play uh, deal at the Swansea.com stadium at the minute. 
Mm. And we pay an extortionate amount of money and we don't make it. The only thing we make money on is our merchandise. And even yeah. then, obviously. And it, yeah, it's a small amount on tickets, I believe. And Yeah, like, and, and even, even not... a good percentage of that is taken because of the we use the Swansea City ticketing service. Yeah. As I understand it, they'd need to be selling sort of 16,000 tickets to be making like notable profit. Um, I'm surprised Bethan has any hair left. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, glorious hair that's still standing maybe it kills it up rather than losing it um, so yeah uh, but what we'd have at any of the places we pick would be primary tenancy mm. so we'd have be the primary tenants over Neath, Bridgen, Swansea Clan Remney, I don't know um, and the idea is that we want to generate non match day profit and have our training base based at where we want to be because we mm. don't own Clan Darcy either. Clan Darcy is owned by in, uh, Nice Batalba College. Um, so, in practical terms, I have said that St. Helens would be the best option because of what you can build on site. Um, Having been to St. Helens multiple times, been in the clubhouse, you know, there's been lots of rumours about the cricket has been told they've got to go. The businesses that were based there, um, I believe Scott Alton was based there, um, have been told to go as well. So, look, this is all speculation. Grain of salt. I'm sorry, Ospreys. Um, it is my duty to report on these things. Um <laughs> Again, if you want to sue me, my name is Robbie Owen. Um, oh, sorry, no, my name is my name is Will Owen. Um, <laughs> any 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 uh, court dates, please forward on to Long Eaton RFC, um, <laughs> and we can go from there. They've been promoted; they've got the money. Um, yeah, be fine. they've got that RFU money now. Yeah, they had uh, bloody Ruben Morgan Williams's brother down at the weekend. Celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> former player yeah 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 What's my brother brother's name? Ruben Morgan, uh rory rory morgan rory Williams. it is rory yeah I'm so he's to think of also his name. rmw because we we were trying to think we were going to do uh on rap our like best 15 or our players 15 it was like players who mm. sound like cars and i said well <laughs> does ruben i can't remember if ruben's brother starts with a b uh and because it, it'd be perfect because it'd be bmw um it's not it's it's RMW again. Yeah, nice it's game. like they're going for Robert rather than Bob. Yeah. Williams. The fittest man I know, that boy, mm. Ruben. Um, great, great guy. Anyway, I think that's everything on the rumour and mill. Um, Cam Jones is the other one going down to South Africa, which was pretty much confirmed by his Instagram story. Which said, yeah. "See you in seven weeks." No, unless Cameron Jones is doing solid time, um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think seven. He, weeks. He's who the lawyers got to. <laughs> yeah. He got to him. Um, yeah, so because he clearly not doing a money laundering scheme because the Australians still have fuck all money. Um, yeah. So yeah, either Cameron Jones is doing hard time or he's going to Blumfontein. Um, so yeah, Cameron Jones will be the other one. Um, but I will cover that as more more comes out. Um, shall we talk about the weekend? Mm. Mm. We should. So I should probably get the the the, the match up. Uh, Ospreys are undefeated against South African opposition this year. Yeah. When was the last time you could say that? <laughs> um, I mean, certainly not the last season we played the Kings. No, but it's it's exciting and weird and strange and new and a hell of a game to put that in. Um, as I said, I went in with an assumption we won, and yet was much too nervous for that final third. And yet, you look back, and for most of that game, we were fairly comfortable, and we're pretty much control of that game, which is not something that this team has done particularly well over the last two seasons is getting control of games and staying control of games, you know? They're very good at scraping it out and winning at the death and clawing their way back into games. They've been less good at getting in front and then just putting the foot on the throat and managing to see the game out from there. And yet there were, you know, there was a spell in which they got those two tries late on. 
um, a kind of 10 minute spell towards the end, but they still saw it out, scored another try afterwards, having quell that momentum and almost kicking that penalty as well. So, yeah. yeah, a really, really pleasing performance and a real kind of step forward for this team to be closing those games out in the style that they did. Yes, Dean, you were at the stadium. Yes. Um, Aussie How was sp- it? Aussie spoke to me, which is interesting. No. That is a story for... That, that's a really interesting tangent, but um, yeah, he spoke to me. So whoever Aussie was on Saturday... So yeah, please come smart. forward. <laughs> well, yeah, please come forward. And the article that he wanted me to write might be coming in the pipeline. Don't know yet. So, yeah. Whoa, Aussie, like actually with words. Yes, he, he genuinely <laughs> Aussie spoke. actually spoke to him. He genuinely spoke. This is groundbreaking development. Did, sorry, not, sorry. Not Scott spoke <laughs> to me. Yeah, can I ask a previous question? Did you drop acid beforehand? <laughs> no, I <laughs> took a photo of my mother who was attending her first game in quite a long time. Okay. And by the time we got to the riverside, it was timed perfectly to when Ozzy was walking past us. Okay. So my mother was joking and said, Oh, she have a photo with Ozzy and the photo happened. And so I so she gave me my phone, she gave me her phone, so I took the photo happy days. I thought Ozzy was just gonna disappear and do whatever Ozzy does or wherever. And then he just taps me on the shoulder and just speaks out of <laughs> absolutely nothing and says that I should write an article saying Ozzy's the best. So um <laughs> yeah, it 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 I just I have to admit I haven't started it, but mainly because there's a European match on the weekend, but it, mm. it might come soon. Who knows? He he That's does incredible. come under the banner of mascots with threatening auras. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there's him and the Leinster one. Oh, God, don't get me started on the Leinster one. There's a whole, um, yeah, situation. I'm just, I'm just waiting to turn up to the brewery field on Saturday. Ozzy's just there waiting. Saying, Where's this after? <laughs> With a baseball bat. <laughs> Him and Cyril the Swan. 800 <laughs> words by 9pm. Yeah. I, 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 Right, so my, my my best friend Morgan used to actually be Aussie. Mm. He was Aussie while he was in university. He was when he did, when he did big work with us in the community. Um, so he was Aussie on match day. So he used to walk past me and, and yes, everyone know where my 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 seat is, and I just used to turn around and just sort of fist bump Ozzy, and then he'd go back to bang <laughs> in the drum or like take a photo with the, with the kids. <laughs> I, I can't imagine where... you no, hugging on. Ozzy on the weekend, and he just goes, "I know where you live, Yeston," and you're like, <laughs> keeps, and he's like, keep smiling. <laughs> go on, Robbie. Oh God, no! So I was going to go on a tangent about when I. No. Um, I when I was in uni for um, our varsity, which for some reason I went to the University of Derby, and for some reason our varsity was against Northampton because it was the closest university that didn't have another better rival, um, because all the Nottingham ones and all the Leicester ones, which are closer, were all all had you know other unis within the city. So for some reason we went to Northampton and no one really cared. But you're like, well, we make it into a big deal. And I spent a day once as the uh, Derby mascot, but we didn't have a mascot, so instead I ended up wearing a Sonic the Hedgehog costume all day. And dancing, in a way I have never felt freer before or since. The following year, they had me like presenting the TV coverage uh, with my friend James, a different James. Um, yeah. No, and that, that footage I fear is still out there because it then brought me back the following year, like after Squid Rugby had started but hadn't like taken off enormously. Um, after I'd graduated as well, but they were like that one. Well, last year, can you come back or the other year whenever we last hosted it? Um, I yeah, I've got no idea that footage is still out there. I don't think I was that great, um, and hence why I've never sent it off as a show reel. What I'm saying <laughs> is, I've done every job in the business. I'm now discovering. I, it's just because because uh, right, I, I'm a bit snobbish when it comes to last year because obviously I've been yeah. I was at Swans University, mm. which is like full national media coverage. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's the second biggest varsity outside, you know, the the Tory one. Mm. Um, it, you know, and the person it's who does the, the biggest varsity you can play in is someone without a double barrel surname. Yeah, and, and Dave Rogers does the, the varsity commentary oh, wow. for the rugby because um, he's because he's the best. Uh, we love Dave <laughs> in this podcast, um, but yeah, I, I just sort of remember 
<laughs> walking into the stadium at the last because I was in COVID when Varsity happened, so we had to wait till mm. COVID was over. And me and me and my best mate, we walked in there and like sort of been drinking all day. And I'm just thinking it's 30 degrees, and there's a bloke stood there in this whatever Swansea's mascot was. It was a swan of some sort, and I'm like, you could not have paid me enough. Oh God! To do you should see the state of my hair afterwards because it was yeah, it was a hot boiling day when I did the Sonic costume, and boy, I it was mostly like curled up into one ball of sweat. I was a very sweaty little girl. That came out horribly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the game. <laughs> um, so, uh, try scorers Tom Bota, Martin Gillingham somewhere has exploded. Um, <laughs> he's not Mr. Gamer now, he's got to try. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, Tom Bota got the first uh, after sort of some sustained pressure on the line. It was really weird seeing Ospreys play quick ball that close to the line. We just sort of kept picking yeah. it up and, and seeing, like, you know, anyone could have scored. Um, and then Sam Parry on his 100... We haven't talked about Sam Parry yet, and we will. Mm. 150 games. Score, scores the most anti-Sam Parry try possible. <laughs> Where he... he uh, uh, Ruben will go in and spots the gap, um, makes, the, makes the, the break, which he often does. Uh, and it gives a two on one to Sam Parry, who canters in from about 15 meters. And yeah, which makes come... it his longest range try by 14 meters. <laughs> and it was just, there's if there's a man who he, there's, no one deserves it more than that man mm. that we've said before, I've said it all week. He is an Ospreys legend. And, you know, he grew up supporting the Ospreys. He is Mr. Osprey. In the most unsaid way, he is Aussie. Yeah, he is the one who told yesterday, "Where's my article?" That um, would make that would make a lot more sense. Yes, it would. Um, he's a he, he's a friend of the pod. Um, he's just an all round great guy and, and deserves it. And he does, you know, he in the same way he deserved his yellow card because <laughs> he just wanted a break. <laughs> because I would too after having to score from fifteen meters. It was a beautiful, perfect tribute game to it, wasn't it? Like 100% line out, yeah. nailed everything, scores a try, gets a yellow card. What more could you possibly ask for? I only play 31 minutes on my 150th game. Yeah, yeah, I do all of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lions then hit back uh, with a try of their own uh, through... Uh, PJ Bota. PJ Bota. PJ yeah. Bota. Uh, the the second best voter on the pitch that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they yeah they they get a try and then we do well to hold out. Um, again, just before half time, we come out forty nine minutes. Then uh, Morgan Morris, who had a absolute stormer, um, I think it was about eighteen out of twenty tackles, twenty one carries. Uh, dummies goes over for the try. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Is Morgan Morris because we get it all the time, right? He, it's the Morgan Morris cycle. Of, they'll have a really good game. He'll get player of the match. Speak really well. There'll be uh, some scrum. He'll have a bit on scrum fight where they say he's really good. You have one Wales online article saying um, he's in the Welsh winners and losers this week, and then that's it. He doesn't get picked. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's a cycle of Morgan Morris. What more does he have to do? Robbie, you go first. I I wish I knew. Um, I think there was a couple of points against Munster. I'm talking, I say a couple, I mean literally two points against Munster where they tried to send him in on kind of ship ball to generate game line and he didn't, he kind of met the game line rather than crossing it. And we're looking at, and I had someone tweet to me saying like, does that, does this tag, this particular carry explain why he isn't playing for Wales? Because he isn't an automatic 100% of the time, you know, generating um, game line ball. And the thing is, I think he's worth the fact that maybe he's a, you know, eight times out of 10, he crosses the game line rather than nine times as maybe you want in a test eight. I think he's worth it for the amount Elsie brings in terms of the link play. Toby described him as one of the top three, I think, most like rugby intelligent players he's ever worked with. Um, 
the amount he brings in defense as well. You know, you mentioned his tackle stats, the turnovers as well. There's a crucial on right at the end to kind of win that penalty that, you know, Jack Walsh almost kicks to, you know, hits the post with, ultimately leads to the Keelan Giles try. On the, sorry, um, his offload for Keith to score. Um, I think he has an all-round game. I think he is safely the second best in Wales to Talipa Falatel, who is a player that, you know, I love and I think is one of Wales' two real world-class players with him and Jack Morgan. Um, and I would have him in, you know, every squad possible. He'd be there every week for me. He'd be making the 23. Um, I couldn't tell you, you know, beyond the odd, perhaps it's a size thing, perhaps it's, you know, just the raw power isn't there in the same way it is for some other eights. But then that's never stopped an awful lot of players making it a test level, including Tolupe Falatel, who isn't that huge. But Josh Navidi is the eight. other one, isn't it? Josh mm. Navidi was ignored for years. And then when yeah. Josh Navidi retired, it was really hard to look at a Wales back row that didn't have a Josh Navidi in it. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard at the minute. Shot. Yeah. It's really hard at the minute to see an Osprey back row that doesn't have that when Morgan Morris isn't in it, you mm. lose something. Yeah. Yes, didn't in, talk to about Morgan, in Morgan Morris. Yeah, as Robbie mentioned, he was very good in the weekend. And I think Booth mentioned it post match as well that, you know, it wasn't just the attack and display that he gave, it was also the other side of the ball as well. And um, you know, that's the really pleasing aspect of it. But it wasn't just him, you know, credit to mm. You know the entirety of the front eight who performed very well, and you know especially the likes of Reese Davis and James Ratty too. You know especially especially Ratty was coming from Cardiff for the start of the season has performed very well, and then you've got mm-hmm. your Beard, your Davis who have you know who who are the who are at the moment the first choice lock pairing, and it's kind of. A really interesting selection to bit now for, for next week as if you have in that back row because you kind of you've got a list of players but where do you fit them in because you've got beards probably in at lock you have davis ratby yeah with Deves, morris you know there's the six players then you know one mm. of them has to drop them to the bench so um it's it's really interesting to see how all that's going to work out over the next couple of days and it's a really interesting selection but yeah you know Morris Davis and Ratty were, were the real standouts up front except for the front row who I thought were brilliant in the scrum in the first half yeah. and um, you know maybe the first scrum where they got pushed back a little bit but they won a free kick so you, you can't complain <laughs> they, they yeah. got on top then which was a really and I think thing. we're slightly guilty because we all love Nicky Smith so much and value him so highly of forgetting just how good Gareth Thomas is Oh, on his own so good. regard, you know, mm. he's an absolutely brilliant loose head, brilliant at this level, you know, <laughs> dominant at this level, capable of being dominant at this level. And just because Nicky Smith is the best loose head prop in uh, European club rugby, it, we lose track of, you know, Gareth Thomas is is top 15, you know, maybe top 10. Yeah. There, there's, and <clears throat> I just looked at... <clears throat> That core on the weekend of who stood out, right? Mm. So you've got Owen Watkin, 27, 28 now, is it? Mm. Around that. <clears throat> Reese Davis, who I thought was excellent. There's a bit yeah, yeah. right at the start of the first half where he pops up in a wide channel and just carries over the game. Line. I'm like, oh my God, I need to see this every week. <laughs> James Ratty, who Sean O'Harris Harris rightly pointed out on Scrum 5, was excellent. It's just how it, like, if I was a Cardiff fan, I'd be sick. I'd genuinely be sick watching uh, James Wright do what he does. But you know what? Because you're like, I'd be really proud of that sick. No, I, I would be as well because James Wright left us, right? Mm. And I was not bothered. Mm. I was like, do you know what? Good on him. He's not getting the game time. I've not seen enough to be like, go and, you know, I, I'm going to mourn you. It's been like when Tom O'Flaherty mm. left. Right. Years ago, I was like, I see the potential, but I've seen nothing in an Osprey shirt that says you should be playing week in, week out. And then he went and proved everyone wrong, right? You know, won a premiership title next, uh, was a standout winger, right? With James Wright. He's coming he, down this weekend for sale. He's coming down this week, the Tom of Flatty Derby. Um, yeah. 
with James Wright, I was like in cut when he was at Cardiff playing. I was like, your consistent game line, you're playing brilliantly wherever they put you in a pack that isn't necessarily going forward all the time. You, you know, mm. you look great. And then you saw his press conference last week, three months, and you're like, he's like, I love where I am right now. I yeah. love playing in Swansea. I love playing with my mates, the people I used to play with and against growing up. You're like, that's what you want. And then you see Morgan yeah. Morris as well, who's just uh, uh, and it's just how, and and Robbie, you you know more because you you you've spoken to Morgan a lot, mm. and it reminded me of an article that in Rugby World years ago, that Sarah Mockford did when he was when she was editor, and it was just talking about his sort of coming up at the Ospreys, and you're just like, four years ago, would you have said how good this kid's going to be, and <clears throat> he's been doing this now for two three years. Yeah. And he's showing no signs of letting up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just yeah. brilliant. And then the final, uh, Lewis Lloyd, uh, inheriting the mm. powers of his dad, um, <laughs> Sam Parry, and scored a push over try. Really, he was really good when he came on. Um, mm. He seems to have put Edinburgh behind him now. Yeah. Um, I delighted then, from getting his first try. Yeah. I am as well. He's only just 705 been... <laughs> off Sam Perry. Just because I've been what? Yeah, weird that, you know, Morgan Morris in this game scored the Ospreys' thousandth league try, which is suppressive, especially surprising considering Sam Perry scored 1001 on his own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? We, we we take it as we get it, don't we? Um, yeah, it's just like, I've been watching the footage for the um, the video we made when you know, I was in camp with the Ospreys last week, uh, a week before now, yeah. Um, yeah, which will be up. Tomorrow, hopefully, should be tomorrow. Um, it's finished now, it's done. But just like going over some of those, you know, Lewis Lloyd being such a great lad and so friendly, and he's he smiles for bloody whales, he does. He's always grinning at everything. He laughs at everyone's joke, no matter how bad it is, because I made some bad ones, and I cut a lot of them out, but Lewis Lloyd laughed at every single one of them. And yeah, lovely, lovely guy, as is, you know, that, that team you mentioned. And like, it comes across, I think, in the, not to, you know, praise the thing itself, but like you say, you know, James Ratty's played with some useful players. Yeah, he played with me last week on Mario and yeah. Sonic. And, but like the the interplay between like Ratty, Morris, Sutton in that bit, I'm, you know, I'm there as well. But just like it, it shows all of that when they play on the pitch, you know, you can tell that James Ratty and Morgan Morris get on really well from how well they link up between the two of them. Um, it's kind of irrelevant, but yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I thought Ratty was absolutely fantastic. I also think Justin Tipperick, if you remember that back road that I mentioned? Yeah, do you remember him? The hour he played was maybe the best player on the pitch for me. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. Then quite why he brought him on. He always is. It's incredible. You think he's just going to be on the edge, the outskirt of Trabanos Rugby Club, but no, he's <laughs> absolutely everywhere. The Wiley, the Wiley groundskeeper. <laughs> this ghost, 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 uh, ghost scrum cap. It, it's <laughs> that that break he made. He just makes breaks. It just takes the ball, and he's just so you're like you're like Justin. You're 65, and you're willing to take the ball up like on. Mm. It, it, it's what Josh Matavesa used to do. He's like this slow ball. The defenders come so quickly. Justin Simpson's like, just give it to me. I'm not going to make <laughs> any yards, but I'll give you a quick ball. Um. And then Kieran Williams goes over for the last. I was never worried, right? When Lions scored that second try, mm. and it was what twenty nine twenty one. I was like, they need they need two scores. I was like, right, let's. I, I'm not worrying. Um, mm. There's still, you know, we still got all four points, and then we go down. We hit that drive in Mall, and it goes out to Giles, and and you just remembered the game breaking ability that kid has. Mm. And he, you know, one and two step, and then that Kieran Williams support line, which we've seen um, them both run. Because if you remember, the opposite yeah. happened in the Lions game uh, out there. Kieran Williams runs a lovely uh, line off Harry yeah, Deems, yeah. gives it to Kieran Giles. So you know that that's the that's the link ups you have, and that's that's what happens when you um, when you have a squad that's such as tight knit as that, and. Yeah. You know, it begs the question is that what more do a couple of these boys have to do to, to be in the Wales squad? Or to get just to yeah. get more coverage as a team. Just to be like, what is the secret why you're doing so well? 
and I urge everyone to go and listen to the Scrum Five pod before the mm. Scarlets game before Christmas. And it was just a great insight. I remember they they interviewed uh, Toby, was it Jack Morgan and Ratty? Maybe mm. Cuthbert as well. I think so. Yeah. And you just like this is such a tight knit group who just love each other and want to play, and that just shows in 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 what's building. Anything yeah. else from the game? And well, I just think that's the sort of game that once the Lions come back into it and score those two tries in quick succession around the hour mark, you know, in sixty six and six to seventy four minutes, that's the sort of game that a year ago the Ospreys would panic and potentially lose. Right, mm. and if they did win it, they would have hung on. They would have given away the two bonus points, and they win by a point. Right, they were nine points up against the Lions with uh, what are we looking like a handful of minutes to you know, with an hour to go, um, and then they concede, you know, two tries and a penalty, and they end up losing by a point last year. Mm. And instead, this time, they hold out defensively for that fourth try. They don't let any points seep out. They don't give away a single point on the table. And they go on and score an extra try. You know, they go on and score that Kieran Williams try. And I think it's a real sign of the growth throughout the full team. And sometimes we talk about that from a kind of game management point of view, looking at the halfbacks purely. And I think a little bit is, you know, Ruben Morgan Williams is just a mature player and reason why he throws that intercept um, for Nohan Bay yeah. to go over. Um, and, you know, Morgan Williams being a bit more settled and a bit more conservative has really worked in our favour in a few, few of those. He was, he was great. He, he was really, was. really good. And he has been all season and deserves yeah. the credit for that. Um, but yeah, just I think from a full team performance in terms of mentality and in terms of the way they know they're in a game and they see it out and they don't switch off at all. You know, there's no player that is dropping or drifting out of the game at all. Um, everyone is kind of switched on and focused for the full 80 minutes and knows the task and is able to take what could have been a game that slipped away from them, you know, similar position to last year where they did go on a lose and instead they, they pull it out and they win and they you know, win pretty conventionally, 15 points in the end. Yeah, brilliant win. Takes us up to seventh mm. now. We are ruined, not get the two points from last week. Yeah. We would be level on points with Benetton. Um, and you know, look, we can sit here and say, if we'd have won the games that we should have won, right, we'd be top four right now, mm. which is mental. But we are where we are, and it's a really good place to be. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not going to complain. So, Let's very quickly go into good player. Yes. Because it's sale week, there's only one game we could do, really. <laughs> and that is Ospreys versus Sale in 2021-22, where we lost 45-10. Harry Deep scored his first ever trip. No, it's not that. Um, that it that is would be a really questionable. That would be a de- depressing good player. We could have had, as I talked about on a previous week, the first time we did good player, the previous time that George Ford played at the Brewery Fields on his first game professional rugby, for Leicester that was, Tigers. That was mentioned in the Scrum was, 5 yeah. interview. I was about to say we yeah. could, we could do that one, but... We've done it before. We've done it before. We'd be, we'd be remiss not to do this. I think we'd get shouted of course. <laughs> And rightly so. I so this was it. Osprey 17, Sale Shot 16 from the 2006-2007 Heineken Cup. So, do you remember this Heineken Cup at all? Yes, then you would have been about four. So I'm going to say no, you I'd don't. I'd have been even younger than that. Is... Uh, right. No. I wouldn't have been. We, we all would have been quite young. I don't think we were all really mm. watching rugby at this point, were we? This is probably a year before my kind of introduction to the Ospreys and my watched... moment like as a baby bird. I watched the 2007 my eyes World up. Cup. I watched the 2007 mm. World Cup. I know that because we did a sweet, we did a, um, like a draw the name out of the hat in, in school mm. and the winner got a rugby, a 2007 World Cup hat. And I got mm-hmm. Namibia. Um, <laughs> so that went really well for me. Um, so do you remember who the top point scorer was this year from the Heineken Cup? Oh, God. Uh, take a guess. Paul Grayson, Andy Goose. No. Andy Good. You were right. With Andy Goose. Points. Yeah. Grim. Two, two very contrasting top <laughs> try scorers with seven tries each. Do you remember who they would have been? One was English, one was French. I'll give you a hint. Well, Vincent Clair? No. <coughs> okay. Oh, uh, Cedric Haymore. Haymore. Yeah. yeah. Who was it yesterday? No, I was just saying that Vincent Clair was a very good oh, player. Okay. Yeah, very good. <laughs> uh, Vincent Clair? No, sorry, Cedric Haymore? No. no. 
just naming French wingers of this era. So, so for, 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 it was Clement Poitrino. Oh, okay. Player. Other men with that back three. That's to lose back three. And then Paul Saki. Oh, <laughs> yes. So, Paul Saki, right, is currently, I'm pretty sure, the um, director of rugby at Whitgift School, I want to say, which is wow. in Croydon. Right, which is about ten mm. minutes from where I sat right now. But he's he went to the same um, school as my brother-in-law's, uh, mm. which, which is where like, Don Brent and stuff went as well. It's just oh, like wow. a good uh, good school in Croydon. So yeah, they were the top scorers. This is the year London Wasps won it, uh, if you remember mm. dramatically. I think it's Leicester. So let's go into our game. Let's go through the squads. Let's go through. Let's go through the Ospreys one first. Because I feel like the Sale one's more interesting. Mm. Um. So, coached by Lynn Jones uh, before we just had a career of shit opinions. Um, <laughs> so, you had Lee Byrne, good player. Good, good player. player, great player. Shane Williams, yeah, he was, he was good around this time, wasn't he? Yeah, world player. Of he the was year. all right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sonny Parker, brilliant. Uh, yeah, Paul great, underrated Johnson. player. Excellent player. Oh. <laughs> all right. uh, would, would have been a very young Andrew Bishop. Wow, that would have been a young Andrew Bishop. It would have been a young Andrew Bishop. I um, had a wee next to him the other day. Yeah. In, at the game the other week. Uh, the slowest winger in the world, Nicky Walker. Um, yeah. Who in the, in, in the famous clip... as he was nicknamed. Yeah, in, in the famous clip from this game, has the most awful three minutes of his life. <laughs> I just can't <laughs> catch a ball. Um... Uh, Sean Connor, Kate. Okay, who do you think's older? Right, Andrew Bishop. <coughs> rank these in order of like age. Okay. Andrew Bishop, Justin Tipperick, Jonathan Sexton. Right, Sexton's got to be top. Yeah, he's got to be oldest. He's gonna be thirty eight. Tipperick's thirty six. Bish has got to be thirty seven. Yeah, I'd say... yeah. So there's like, there's like. Four years, three years between them in total. Andrew Bishop's been retired for nine years. He retired young. Yeah. But then James King retired. 29 at 30 when he was well. retired. James King retired wow. at 30. Mm. We were robbed of like potentially Andrew Bishop playing the Pro D2. I know. Oh, man. That would have been gold. Can you imagine? A young William Great Banks coming up against a 38 year old Andrew Bishop and just being punched around. He said, Kid, you've got a future in South Wales. <laughs> There's a world so, in which Bish played under the booth. And that would have been the most beautifully one dimensional thing I would have ever seen. I would have loved it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Sean Connor at 10. Um, oh. Was drafted in very late after um, Gavin Henson injured himself. Uh, now, back uh, coach Wales women. Yeah. Justin Marshall, who's not back coach of Wales women. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, who who now says yeah, Bumfar. Yeah. He, oh, me, oh, my yes boy, he sure does. Me, <laughs> my yes boy. Staple of teenage James's. Um, early mornings watching Sky Sports and yeah. various super rugby games, like watching Western Force versus like the Cheetahs and just like hearing talk about Nick Cummins or something like that. This is um, just before Scrum 5 had a specialist intro for whenever he was on the show. Yeah. Whenever he'd come on as a panellist, they'd play a little like VT of him getting on the train beforehand. <laughs> but they wouldn't do it for anyone else. They'd only do it for him whenever he came on Scrum 5. So then we go into Duncan Jones, captain, who played the full oh, game. Oh, yes. I believe. Yeah. He did play the full game. Um, what a player, man. Brilliant player. Barry Williams. <laughs> Good player. Like a, Very original player. Ospreys. Yeah. Adam Jones. Yeah. Good player. One of the greats. Yeah. Brent Cobain. This just happens. Yeah. Very good. Very bald. Very <laughs> yeah. much got sin binned. He had um, to be there to make up for Adam and Duncan Jones. Yeah. Ian Readable. Evans, a, very, a young Ian Evans. That would have been a very young yeah. Ian Evans, I think. Yeah. Um, the, there's one name that sticks out with this back row who, who is like, 
<laughs> where's Waldo? So Philo Tia who was six. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> in age? No. No, no, in skill level. Uh, mm. Philo Tia Tia at six, who for years is my best, my favourite player ever. Uh, yeah. Steve Tandy. Oh, uh, now we're talking. Sorry, sorry. Trigger warning for us race fans of mid 2010s. Steve Tandy. Steve um, Tandy would be regarded as one of those. Yeah, good player. Yeah, I'd forgotten completely about him. Good player, if not risk coaching. Steve, career. Steve Tandy is essentially what Josh Turnbull is. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing so, so, flashy. So Josh Turnbull's going to be a British and Irish Lions assistant coach in the future. <laughs> well, there's, there, there's talk of Josh He's never going to stop playing. Taking a, there's talk of Josh Turnbull taking over Cardiff. RFC. Wow. Oh, that's, that's news to me. And then finally, Ryan Jones, who would have been oh, a player. year coming off impressed on the Lions tour. He was mm. probably Wales' form player at that time, I'd say, actually. Yeah. This would have been um, captaincy, lead up to Gatlin giving him the Wales captaincy. Yes. Yeah, so this would have been 2007 Six Nations. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Would have been Osprey's yeah. captain, but the well, following year was given. Yeah, the following year, by yeah. Gatland. Uh, on the bench, then, so you had the likes of James Hook, obviously, came on, kicked a winning uh, kick. You had uh, Spice, Jason Spice, oh, uh, Paul yes. James, Hugh Bennett, Jonathan Thomas. Uh, unused was Stefan to Blanche. Like, how can you not use Stefan to Blanche, man? <laughs> he mm. was so good. We didn't know how good we had it. Yeah. Very handsome, man. Very mm. handsome. Uh, and then we go into the sale team. So who do, who managed sale this time? Do you remember? Uh, Kings of Jones with Philip no. San andre It was Philip San andre yeah, and yeah. Kingsley Jones. Yeah. Uh, he ripped apart sale in the post-match. Um, <laughs> <It is. laughs> he said... Uh, we were in control of the game, presumably with a cigarette in his mouth. Um, <laughs> we were in control of the game. We were not clinical enough. I was annoyed with our performance, especially during the first 10 minutes. We dropped the kickoff, missed three tackles, and sc- saw them score a trade on our blind side. That yeah, was he's annoyed at missing three tackles. He should watch his own calendar team. It'll be <laughs> apoplectic. No, this is Philip Saint Andre. This is like Philip Saint Andre. Yeah, Kingsley didn't even do the interview. Oh, man. He's I mean, too yeah, busy, like... Kingsley Jones not being accountable for his own actions. Yeah, what is this? So let's go into the He's going to email me again. Time. He's going to email me. Sale team at the time. So mm. 15, a man called Jay Robinson. Don't know who he was. Must have been crap. Uh, no, of course, Jason Robinson. Um, pre-injury? Because he mm. got injured going into 2007 World Cup, I believe. Because yeah, he was invited to club won. in yeah. 2007 World Cup. Actually, yeah, he was yeah. released at the end he... of this year. Yeah. Ended up playing um, for like Flight RFC. Yeah. Mark Cueto. Good player. Oh, good player. Liked. Uh, I'm sure M. Taylor. Is that Mark Taylor? Um, I imagine so. Yeah. Okay. Elvis Sevilli. I'm assuming it's Elvis. Good yeah, player. good player. Uh, Paddy Powell, oh. infamously. <laughs> Oh, Ripple. Not a clue. Oh, Ripple. I don't know. Not a clue. Charlie Hodgson. Oh, There's yeah. Charles and Charlie. Good player. Good, great player. Went on for a long... There's a few players in here like, well, you've gone on for a long time. Um, S. Martins. Not a clue. Um... Who would it be? S. Martins. I don't know. No, I don't. Um, I'm, ju- I'm going to check this one because I have a feeling. That... Let's have a look. No, let's just take me to Doc Martins. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sail Sharks, S. Martins. Celio Martins. Uh, Tonga. Yeah. That's who I recognize him from. Oh, uh, God, yeah, no, no, no. He, played, yeah, he was played great for, for Tonga played, in, played for in the 2007 World Cup. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. So oh, he started man. his yes. career at Worcester, then went to Swansea, Bridgend, Celtic Warriors, then went to Sale, Scarlet, finished his um, career at Carmarthen Quinns. 
That's mm. a crazy career path. Yeah. No, he was, he was fantastic. He played, yeah, for Tonga in the 2007 World Cup, what we've done on the podcast. And yeah. he was great. Yeah, so Celia Martins uh, was uh, at Scrum Half. Andrew Sheridan. Mm. Yeah, yeah, good player. Oh, good you know, player. test line. Um, S. Bruno. Uh, Sebastian Bruno. Sebastian French Bruno. International. Yeah, played for France. Good player. Great player. Hard bastard. Uh, ben Evans. I assume this is Ben Evans. This would have been, but yeah, I have right. This is Ben Evans. Yeah, Ben Evans. Ben Evans. Yeah, formerly of Swansea, kind of Blues. Um, finished, mm. finished his career at Mosley. Wow. Uh, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, Ben Solid Evans, player. good player, good player. Former Cardiff Met boy, if I believe correctly. Uh. That's where he it was at when he got his uh, first cap for Wales. Uh, hmm. C Jones, can't remember this off the top of my head. Uh, Chris Jones. Chris Jones, yeah. Uh, D Schofield. Dean Schofield. Dean Schofield, Dean. good player. Good oh player. man, I like Dean Schofield. Uh, went on to uh, Captain Worcester for a while. It was yeah, great. Really like, yeah. It was one of those players who is no, I think he yeah he did play for England. Um, but just like a proper nuggety old school player that you don't get many of nowadays was just a massive massive pain to play against, and that was his main USP. I like Dean Schofield. One of my favorite players next, Jason White. Oh, great player, hard bastard. Mm. Hard bastard. Um, obviously, famously played for Claremont until 2012. Somehow, mm. um, then what a back row this is! Magnus Lund, great oh, player. Good player, hell of a beat. Great, loved Magnus Lund, the techno good, Viking. Uh, yeah. No, I think Eric Lund, his brother. Sorry, Eric Lund, his brother. Yeah, yeah Eric Lund. Because Magnus played for England, didn't he? Yeah. And his brother Both good famously, players. Play, famously plays for Norway. Yeah. Um, so you have Magnus Lund, uh, Juan, <laughs> Juan Martin Fernandez Lobby. Mate, what a one man. of the greats. <laughs> what a player. What a man. Uh, on the bench, some notable names, Richard Rigglesworth. Uh, he was oh, probably hello. Thir- yeah. He was 33 at this point, I think. <laughs> um, Sebastian Chabal. Mm. I mean, yeah, uh, and- great player. Yeah, Christian Day, who wasn't used. Future um, MasterChef winner, Christian Day. Yeah. And annoying RPA president. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you, you can't not talk about this game and talk about the try. 30, 39 yeah. or 31 phases or something like that. Or passes. Yeah. Two things. One of... mm. The standard of rugby back then was awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, B God it meant so much you could see to them players go mm. go on Robbie you, you say you say. no just I think this is one of the most famous and iconic Ospreys tried ever um, it, top just 10, the endless endless phase play goes on forever Go play goes into what was it like the 96th minute and then uh, no we were in 88, I think. Oh, wow. Okay, even further. Yeah. Uh, sorry, 80. Yeah, 80. But yeah. Um, yeah, James Hook kind of wiggles out wide. They recycle the ball on the blind side. The winger, which would have been uh, what? One of, one of the one of the wingers, anyway. Um, I guess it'd be, yeah, um, Ripple. It falls off the tackle of Lee Byrne, who Blings it wide to Shane Williams, who crosses and tries to take it as far under the post he can, and almost takes it much too close under the post, and almost they check it, didn't they? They check it. They Jason Future check it, which is ironic because Mark Quaid was playing in this game. (laughs) (laughs) So sorry, Mark. Um, Yeah, I just yeah, I remember like there's some love. Alan Wynne Jones at one point runs a beautiful light. And I think mm. he tricks the cameraman as well because he runs it like towards the post and no one sees him. He takes contact really well. Um, oh, yeah, he was playing. Alan Wynne-Jones. Um, 
this has been debut season for Halloween. Um who else? Yeah, that, that last one Lee, he, is a classic Lee Byrne run, actually, for that last yeah, bit we put yeah. Shane in, where he's he pops up in that five meter channel and ends up just drifting in like another three, four meters. Mm. And it's just that is like if you hadn't seen Lee Byrne before, that's what he'd do for the next 10 years for Wales or like eight years for Wales, mm. just like that exact same angle of being in that five meter like that and then sort of slowly drifting in and putting someone in. It's just beautiful. It was just, in terms of drama, Ospreys have done dramatic wins before. That's just, that's up there with one of the best of all yeah. time. It's for me. the template for find a way. Yeah, 100%. Barry refused to give him any credit. Oh, agreed, agreed, agreed. Including for, you know, the Netherlands, who were, I'm extremely excited by, but, you know, he's coaching at the minute and you'd be like, oh God, it's Lynn Jones, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, James Hook nailing the conversion in the last play. Another man that you know, I will be, I will give credit. Um, not delightfully so, but yeah, hell of a conversion to win it at the end. Very Owen Williams uh, versus Leicester, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's the vibe. I think that's the closest we've come since, yeah. including Owen, yeah. going almost ten minutes into extra time. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's exactly that in the Heineken Cup. Mm. To beat the defending champions, because that's what and go through. Yeah, yeah, and go through. Yeah, no, well, we didn't go through this time in, the, in terms of. Did we not? No, we lost on points. Th- uh, try difference to the oh, Saints. Um, my daily, my week, my weekly dig at the Scarlets. I said this to the boys off air, and they pissed themselves laughing. So, if Lefty Scarlets, as they were at the time, held a very good record <laughs> doing this, um, this this competition so they um have set the record for most match points uh, earned in a single campaign so they were the fourth team to ever win all their games since a bonus points uh system was introduced um and they earned 27 points and that was a record so they would have been celebrating mm-hmm. that they'd gone through you know done this amazing thing that record lasted for two hours <laughs> and then be a ritz broke it <laughs> 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 so it's not, it was brilliant. Oh, right. To finish, what mm. do you think the music charts were like on the twentieth oh, of October, two thousand and six? Oh God, I bet it's grim. Monster by the Automatic at number two. I I, I hope so because that <laughs> is a fantastic, fantastic song. North Walian band. Yeah. Uh, Right. Is the it coming over the over the hill, Ollie Cracknell? <laughs> it's regional affinity. Um, <laughs> so, um, oh, okay, it's not actually terrible. So, first was America by Razor Light. Okay. Which isn't a terrible okay. song. Yeah. And then you had I Don't Feel Like Dancing by the Scissor Sisters, which is one of my oh. favorite pop songs. Yeah. I love that song so much. But then, no, third, this actually, was. Third was Jump in My Car by David Hassel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, number four, I, I'm. It was P Diddy. I can't, I can't get away from it. It was P Diddy. Um, other, other sort of um, sexy back by Justin Timberlake was in at this time. Promiscuous, Benelli Furtado and Timberlake. Hips don't like High School Musical breaking free was just above Ooh. Every Time We Touch by Cascada, which was just <laughs> above Chasing Cars by Snow Patrol. Oh, this is a... This oh, wow. Is a, Chelsea Dagger. Oh, this is a cracking chart. Black, Welcome to the Black Parade. My Chemical Romance was new in oh, this yeah. week. Peaked at, peaked at 23. Oh, wow. Um, This is a great... This would have been what's on the in the changing room after. You really just don't know. They would have been listening to Breaking Free by Hesky Musical. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, some cracking songs, yeah. So that was Ospreys vs. Sale 2006. You're not doing the um, film chart as well, all right? I'll do the film chart very quickly because I'm okay. area of time. Look, oh, oh god, yeah, sorry. No, um, no, 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 it's fine. It's no, sorry, fine. sorry, got, sorry. I've got, I, I got, it, I've got it. I noticed last week the podcast is 40 minutes shorter when I'm not on it, and I apologize for that. What was happening um, last week? I, I had work to do last week, that's why I had a lot of work. Um, right, the departure so, was about that era, that's my guess. 
uh, what was that, October 2006. Uh, it was around this time, so we were in 20. Sorry, I am getting that now. Mm -hmm. 20. But yeah, October. just to fill, fill with it air, you know. Yeah, um, go for it. One of the great Osprey's moments, a moment I think many of us remember for the Stephen Benjamin Cole video that he uploaded on YouTube of this title, Most Dramatic Try Ever, question mark. I knew none of the context for this, but I fell into it when I first fell into the Ospreys. And it was one of my first kind of memories of them was learning about this try afterwards down the line. It's a moment that's like remained in folklore, much like the film The Departed by Martin Scorsese. It's, um, it's a rite which... of passage. Yeah. So, uh, film like this week. million views, isn't it? On the, the clip oh, on wow. YouTube. Something like yeah. that. So at number one was The Prestige. Oh, great film. Great film. Then it was The Departed. Okay. Um, you you also Mate. had The Marine uh, with John Cena was in at this oh, time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I, Jackass 2. <laughs> um, what else was it? Barnyard was in at this point. Superman this, Returns sort of been around. Is this time. the best week there's ever been? <laughs> for, for, is that what yeah, we're learning? Probably. Yeah, the prestige, well, the prestige the departed. departed in the Marine. Osprey's winning in the last minute. The Marine, yeah. Um, my Chemical Romance, uh, Great Scissor year. Sisters. What Great a year! year. Great, oh year man, we've become uh born in the wrong era, people, but we were born in the right era. Yeah, we were just too young, <laughs> we were yeah. just yeah. right. So, let's very quickly, yeah, sorry, about game. That. On the weekend, so Osprey's was a sale at the brewery field. Mm. You two are going to be there, yes. Um, Robbie, you're going to uh hopefully see Yestin, that would be nice, yeah. Um, uh, as well as Josh Gardner from the Blood and Mud podcast will be down there, yes, yep. Who I haven't invited um, along, who we should probably ask to come on the pod, <laughs> yeah, at the, high, be up the, uh, at the high profile Osprey's fan in the in the woke lefty pod in world. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we should probably ask him to come on, um, especially as he's gone on some great Osprey's Field rants recently on Twitter. <laughs> um, so what are we expecting? Yes, hmm. Dingo. Uh, rugby is what hopefully will happen. <laughs> Bloody um, rugby. Yeah, that, that thing. Um, I think it's going to be quite a physical battle. Um, you know, both sides are will be wanting to get dominance up front and you know who can blame them it's it's, it's not good rugby at the end of the day so the scrum battle is going to be interesting um Adam B is on the Osprey side so the lineup should go well um and and then you just got to hope that conditions are, are fair and you know unlike New Year's Day when it was you know the weather wasn't the best as obviously so it's seen by by the pitch, you know, if, if the weather does hold out, it could be a really exciting game. But even if mm. the weather does come in, it could be one of those really dogged and really tight affairs, which you don't really know who's won until about 20 minutes after the final whistle. <laughs> so um who knows? I think Sale will look to um look to get dominance up front. I think that's what they tried to do mm. the last time they played a couple of seasons ago. And they didn't really get that as much as they wanted, even though they did score three really quick tries in Swansea, and they just won that yeah. game. For that, but yeah. um, but yeah, you know, there's going to be a really intriguing battle of ten between whoever the Ospreys select. A ten, it could be Owen Williams, it could be Dan Edwards. I think it could be probably, Walsh. Could even be Walsh, but I think for the Edwards supporters, I think it's a little bit tricky chucking them in against. Someone that's so good in George Ford, so maybe you have Owen mm. Williams just as the experienced head in the round. Maybe you have Walsh a full back again, who seems to be working really well. Um, so me as and obviously as a second kicking option as well. With you know with, with well with no Bosch off, you're going to see Owen Rockin on the field as a second distributor as well. So it's it's going to be really interesting. You know both sides are going to go in hopefully fully loaded. Despite both yeah. sides having opportunities to reach league playoffs, so they're going to both have a 
have a crack of the Challenge Cup, so that's exciting to see. Yeah. I kind of expect right. this to be a big emotional performance from the Ospreys, and whether that throws them off or whether that fires them up in a way it did against Saracens last year, um, this feels like a big game they've been building towards. And the squad reportedly asking to play at the brewery field because they want the better atmosphere and they want it to kind of build into a standout moment. I think they're targeting over the growth of this squad, you know, of them coming and beating a premiership finalist from last year, doing it in knockout conditions rather than catching them cold or catching them in, you know, a place in which, as has happened a few times over this year and last, where, you know, they're perhaps not expecting the Ospreys to be as strong as they have been. They're perhaps riding on history rather than on current form. Sale don't have any excuse for that. You know, it's a big knockout game. There's a lot in their press stuff this week about them talking very much about the premiership and about targeting getting the top four there. Because they're yeah, in a similar position to us. Sale whatsoever. Yeah. They're in a similar position where making the playoffs is possible, but they're going to require, you know, winning a few really tough games. And they've got fewer games in which to do it. Um, with the premiership office being further along in the season and having fewer teams. But you get the sense that they're going to send a strong team out as Toby mentioned on the uh, scrum five podcast, you know, he spoke to George Ford about he's expecting and excited to play at the brewery field. I think they're very aware of the challenge it poses and probably looked over that card of tape and seen what that's going to look like. I'm really excited. This is a game that's been in my head since, you know, before the six nations, it's been there as a kind of carrot and a thing coming. And I'm almost in disbelief that it's almost here. Um, but yeah, this Look, the Ospreys have never won a European knockout game in either European competition before. That hangs yeah. over us. That sits on our head, and it should. I feel like we haven't had a better chance than this weekend. Obviously, you look at something like Newcastle, which was you know perhaps a, a few years ago in Toby Booth's first year, perhaps a more obviously winnable game, right? But this feels like a game you can get yourself up for very easily. And yet, this is a sale team who have... The games they've won this season have been games where they've started well and where they've been in control early on and they then kicked on and really smashed the opposition. And they perhaps haven't been so great at fighting back. But then last week's win over Exeter, where they absolutely trounced them, might give them some confidence to do that and convince them they're on a run to finish the season. So, yeah, really, really interesting one. Really exciting. Um, I'm nervous more than anything else, I yeah. think. But I would take any win, any result. I would take 6 5. I would take 3 0. I'd take whatever. It's knockout rugby. But yeah. 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 We've absolutely got this in us. So I said this on rap is that mm. we have to own the fact that we have never won a European knockout. Yeah. We cannot hide from the fact that we've never won one, right? Mm. We have to own it, right? And we have to move forward with it, not move on from it. I talked to, I talked to about my, when I talk to students, right? So moving forward is better than moving on. Yeah, yeah. So we cannot escape that fact, right? We've never won them. We cannot escape the fact that there is the pressure is on us. We've moved it from yeah. the Swans.com stadium to the brewery field, right? We have to look at this game with a fresh set of eyes from never mind the, the sale Cardiff one. You know, mm. never mind the um, the sale games last time we played them. It is a great opportunity for a tight knit squad to go out and make history. Yeah, for for the Ospreys, that that is that is the bottom line. Is this is a history make? This is a, a legacy defining game to be the first mm. Ospreys team to go out and win a European knockout game. Yeah. Big, and you know, go on. Please, sorry, go on. No, you got. No, you, you go on. Oh, just it because the thing is, it feels like a monkey that needs getting off the back because it can then open so much up. You know, I feel mm -hmm. that that is most the pressure on this performance on this game is the fact they've never done it, and this team, this particular Ospreys team, not the Ospreys in general, have never won a knockout game. You know, they've never been in the situation. They're in the situation once. They played one knockout game under or two game knockout games under Booth. They lost both of them. Um, you know, Saracens last year in Newcastle a few years ago. And now they find themselves in a situation where they've got to kick on. And uh, we've seen them grow. And what I mentioned about the Lions game earlier this year, 
earlier this week rather and earlier this pod i meant earlier this pod but i said earlier this year which was technically yeah. correct um this part i understand if you think this podcast feels like it's gone on all year um but this team has learned to close out games much much better and it's got much better at finding ways to win um rather than just finding ways to fight and stay in games or to get ahead um it's much better at closing out games and being very yeah um, to use a Toby Boothism, uh, very mindful the way they do it and the way they look to close it out. Um, I think Owen Williams is a key player here as well. He's one of those players that gets better the longer he plays and the more games he gets back together post-injury. Yes. And he often looks pretty ropey on his first game back. And then that one guy on Reddit gets furious with him and says, you should never play rugby again. And then you give him two games and suddenly he's up to speed and he's fantastic and he's kind of seeing things out. And as you mentioned last week, you know, his goal kicking perhaps has been a bit of an issue, but he is a player who I trust to put over a kick in the last minute to win it nine times out of ten. He's done he's you know? done it before. Yeah. That's the thing. The, the, and if it we comes have... down to a Shane Williams scoring the corner situation, there's no one in this squad or perhaps in regional rugby at the minute that I'd want taking that kick instead. We have we have to start well. We have to start like yeah. we did against the Lions, right? In that we have to hit gain line. Mm. We have to have positivity in our carries. We have to um, be clinical. I'd like the penalty count to be slightly lower. I think if we can keep it under double digits, right? Mm. We can't let emotion uh, dictate what we do. Um, we have to shut down sales threats early. So Tom Roebuck, Ben Curry, um, you know, we we can't fear, so we have to respect them. We can't fear them. They, mm. There's nothing there in sale in which I'll say, I'm going to go on the record, there's no one at sale who I'm legit scared of. Sure. There's no there's no Lou Diaga anymore. There's no Faf de Klerk anymore. Man who's not what he was, right? George Ford oh. is there. But he's not he's not a game breaker in terms of he's not gonna make a sixty meter run. George Ford is gonna control mm. the game really well and he's gonna kick really well. But you can shut that down. Mm. Sale sale kick when sale kicks really well against Exeter because they had quick ball and they put Exeter mm. in positions where they can't they, they you know, Josh Hodge couldn't react to it or Ollie Woodburn couldn't react to it. So, so things like that. So if we if we disrupt that ball I, I, yeah, I, look, destiny's in our hands. We could have been playing I, sharks away this weekend, right? Yeah, is is the over anything? But we against all odds went out to uh, Joe Berg and won. Mm. There's no reason why we can't do it today uh, on Saturday. And I I get very nervous. You hear saying George Ford and Manu Tulangi are game breakers because I now expect both of them. To do that, um, I have an increased level of fear. Um, but also, I do kind of agree with you. And yet, I also would weirdly feel more confident if we see Sale's strongest team. I think what this Ospreys team wants to do is to put in a performance and prove that they can beat a team of absolute top qual- quality and caliber. Yeah, um, We saw it come very close against Saracens last year. We did it against I Leicester. Think, yeah, yeah. And Montpellier. Yeah, but I don't Montpellier think, well. yeah, sail at home is the same as Saracens away. You know, there's kind of an air and a fear and they're like, Saracens are very used to that and they used to fight back into that. And the moment the Ospreys went behind from that Reese Webb intercept, Saracens just put the foot in the throat and closed it out. And I feel like if a similar thing happens, if a similar situation, you know, we end up in that and instead... Aaron Pope runs under and scores a winning try and one of the props misses them on the on the celebration attempt. I feel like the Ospreys can fight the way back in from there and especially with the home ground behind them and especially with you know the atmosphere the Brewfield can generate. I feel it's a very different situation to against Saracens where they just close that out and they end up with that late um, mall try. I'm not going to ask for score predictions because I think I'll give you mm. both nervous breakdowns. <laughs> um, yeah, because you two are already nervous wrecks as it is. What I will say is enjoy it on the weekend, enjoy the mm. occasion. And so I'll say to every Ospreys fan, it's enjoy the occasion, get behind the team. We're live on S4C, you know, we're flying the flag for Wales. 
there, there's, you know, we win this. There's no reason we can't go further, right? Because at that point, you know, there's no one, only people that can stop us is us, essentially. <laughs> yeah. So go out, enjoy it. Good luck to the Ospreys. Uh, we yeah. haven't seen anything to do with the squad at the minute. Press conference will be out tomorrow, hopefully. Um, yeah. Yes, Denny, you at the press conference? Are you invited to the press conference this week? Uh, no, um, there's, there's the perks of the work placement being uh, <laughs> bastard in the last week's. Go uh, back. Uh, right. Uh, okay. So we'll find out tomorrow. There's some sweating on the fitness of um, uh, Sam Parry. Mainly, I think is 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 the other one. They said he they're expecting with... Sam Parry and yeah. Nicky Smith to be fit. I expect them to which be fit. Boost. But you... Someone mm. said Reese Davis as well, and I, I that would be that would be a thing. Mm. But we'll see you next week uh, to react to the uh, to react to the to the results, no matter what it is. Um, no, I'm I'm nervous now. I feel pent up. I feel yeah. afraid yeah. to sleep. I'm gonna it's have just, to. I'm gonna have to watch something. Um, it's just the thought process of potentially coming here next week, either ridiculously happy or ridiculously <laughs> depressed. I just, well, I don't think I can take it. So I think we've then got a week off the following week, so we've got to talk about nothing yeah. else. That we'll find something. Or so is it it's if we win away, or it's Gloucester or cast home? Yeah, so it's cast home or Gloucester away, which is more like Gloucester wins. away. Yeah, that's on the Friday night. Um, Gloucester battered casts a couple of months ago in the ball stage. So you'd imagine, though also, you know, stranger things have happened and much stranger things have happened to Gloucester. So it could go either way. I can see it going either way. Um, though, yeah, I'd expect Gloucester away, which would be a really fun trip as well. And a really winnable That would be a trip I will make. <laughs> Not. Absolutely. <laughs> because it's the week after. But, right. You can find us all on the regular socials at Squidge and the School Rugby at Yes Then Score Times Twenty One at Osprey's Irie. I gotta say, we hit four hundred followers recently. Um, it, it's just I, I'm so blown away with the support we get. The engagement on uh, on X at the minute has just been out of the out more than I could ever dream of. Um, so yeah, even from Scarlet's fans, <laughs> they're really enjoying our stuff. Um, so yeah we'll see you next week um, as, as Robbie says before every game Godspeed and good luck um, <laughs> which is what he said to us on the weekend and uh, <laughs> turned his phone off um, <laughs> so yeah enjoy it on the weekend boys and we'll see you all very soon